Welcome to Postscript. Here we hope to answer your questions and help you dig deeper into the messages and sermons at FaithBridge by talking with the teacher of the day. Hello and welcome to Postscript. My name is Adam McIntyre and I'm joined today by Pastor Ken Warline, who just preached part six of our Abraham series called Walking the Talk. Pastor Ken, thank you so much for being here with us today. Uh, We had a handful of questions that came in, so I'm just going to jump right in. Um, The first one had to do with um, Lot and his particularly horrible decision to um, try to offer up his daughters in exchange for the men And I know that there's a lot of people in our audience um, who are uh, survivors of sexual abuse. um, And some of those uh, survivors, the abuse may even come from a family member, someone close and trusted. And so they hear about this horrible act that Lot did. And man, it's it's kind of tough to keep going with the story. It becomes a sticking point. And they're wondering why in the world is did God not do anything about that? Like, why is God giving Lot a second chance when he would do something so horrible? Um, so, yeah, why does Lot get this grace, but not the rest of Sodom? Yeah. yeah. Who understands these mysteries? Right. Well, let me, I think, let's try to answer it in two ways. Okay. First, let me answer it pastorally, mm-hmm. as a pastor, uh, particularly if the questioner is a survivor of some sort of abuse right. uh, of, 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 in our own family or something like that, that would be uh, just particularly terrible. Mm-hmm. I think what we'd want to make sure that nobody mistakenly thinks the text is saying is that uh, God is against sin except right. this kind of sin. And he kind of gives a pass to child abuse right. in this sort of thing. No, not that at all. Mm-hmm. And uh, just speaking as a pastor to anybody who is a victim of abuse, I'm just terribly sorry. And here at Faithbridge, we would want to do everything that we can do to help that person work through the pain, come into a season of rebuilding and healing and, uh, you know, journeying forward right. to the extent uh, that that person w- would like uh, help in mm-hmm. our prayers and so forth that. Right. And let me answer it theologically or biblically. Mm-hmm. I think um, it's particularly difficult for us whenever there's a heinous crime right. uh, that strikes particularly close to home. Uh, For some, maybe that is a murder. How could any murderer ever be shown grace because my such and such was murdered, you know, or, oh my gosh, I can't even imagine. Uh, You know, and, and, or this sort of thing, this type of abuse or, or whatever. I think theologically or biblically, um, we stand on solid ground reminding ourselves that in the end, God is going to uh, vindicate us from every sin that has been done to us. He's going to settle uh, the score. He's going to uh, cleanse the world from evil and destroy the enemy, me himself. So, uh, I think we find some comfort in that. Sure. Now, as soon as we start saying, yeah, that's right, they deserve that coming to them, we come to that interesting passage in 2 Peter 3, where the Christians who were being persecuted in the early church 2,000 years ago are like, God, why don't you come and wipe out these Roman people who are persecuting us and hurting us? And, and Peter's having to remind them, hey, I know you would like for him to come and settle the score and be done with evil, but let's not forget the fact, the moment that he comes to be done with all of the evil in the world, we too will be done away with because we have evil in us too. All of us have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And so Peter's reminding them, 
he's not being forgetful. He's being patient. Right. He's being patient so that more people can come to saving faith in Jesus. And so in that regard, we stand back and say, okay, I would like to think this person's going straight to hell, but I also like the fact that I am a recipient of grace. I haven't done anything like that, but I've done my own things and he's being gracious. He's been patient long enough to come back the second coming so that I could come into salvation. Um, and there, but for the grace of God would go any of us. Right. And so I think we have to be careful. Um, it almost sounds like I'm talking out of both sides of my mouth. I think I'm saying both as honestly and truthfully as, as I can, as I can mean it. Sure, absolutely. Well, and, and you know, what you said reminds me too of just like the scandalous nature of God's love, of his grace, of how much more expansive it is than uh, even we would like to think. Like we wouldn't like to think of God's grace and love extending to someone even like Lot. Um, uh, and, and you're right, it, it does serve as almost kind of a heart check um, for me in those moments uh, to remind myself like it's not about my justice sure. and, and whatever else. But then at the same time, you're right, God is on the side of the victim, he's on the side of the oppressed. Sure. And, it's one of those strange... Well, it is. And it was strange even in Jesus' time. Uh, you remember uh, Jesus told that interesting parable about the, 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 the manager who had gone out and f hired the day laborers. Right. And some of the day laborers uh, had come in and they'd worked a whole long day's shift. And they're going to get the reward that he had told them at the end of the day you're going to get. Right. But then he does this scandalous thing, scandalous in their minds. Sure. He goes out and hires some, uh, somebody in the 11th hour. And so they put in a paltry hour of work and they get the same reward. And they're like, what's that deal? How's that fair? <laughs> and Jesus said, hey, wait a second. Yeah. Didn't I give you exactly what I promised? Right. And it's up to me if I'm gonna show the same measure of love and grace and forgiveness to him, that's that's for me to decide. And this is the part of humanity that's difficult for us because we would kind of like to be God sometimes, but then right. we have to remember, no, wait, I don't, I'm the recipient of grace myself. That's right. And so we pray for other people who are far from God that they might come to know grace um, and that they would step into the fold of the faithful um, because we know it's either they're evil and their sin will be dealt with at the cross, through repentance, or in the final destruction. Um, but it will be dealt with. That's good. And then another question came in from someone who wants to know, um, in a hypothetical situation, let's say in a work environment, if they've become so assimilated in that work environment, is it even possible for them to uh, infiltrate that work environment anymore? For Christ. Uh, for Christ, right. Yeah. Uh, is, or is there, is there no chance mm -hmm. left once you become so assimilated? Yeah, yeah, it's a great question. And it shows the person is, was listening to the message and I'm glad. Uh, you know, I mentioned three things that we kind of want to check ourselves on. How's my personal devotional life? Where's my spiritual community, my right. biblical community? And who am I influencing? Sure. And, and so that you're asking this third one, uh, I think is great. I would say, well, let's go back and ask the first two uh, prior to it. In your devotional life, you're praying about this question that you're asking. I don't know who you are and I don't know where you work. I don't know the history, the dynamic, but, but, but God does. What's he telling you, right. I would say? Uh, what are you seeing in God's word as you're saying, what's my answer, God? Am I supposed to stay or have I lost the opportunity really to be a compelling witness? And I just need to pack it in and, and start over somewhere else. Right. Um, what's he saying? What's your spiritual community saying? What are your Christian brothers yeah. or sisters saying? You try it out on them and they're like, you're out of your mind. Sure. Yeah. You, you know yourself well enough to know you'll never, not with these people. Or maybe they'll say, You've got some Christians on the inside there. It, could you congregate with them and be fortified by them, checking in with them to make sure you're not relapsing back into the old crowd and the old ways? Um, 
what's your community saying? Right. God gives us these benefits um, uh, through prayer and through his word and through community. So I would put the question back to you sure. and say, what, what's he, what is he saying through that? The only, uh, I guess, broad stroke, uh, brushed stroke uh, idea I would put out for you to ponder is this. If you have m uh, learned a script, so to speak, and you've been going out on the stage and doing the same show day after day for 10 years. Mm -hmm. Can you really shred that script and right. uh, metabolize and own a new script with that same audience, um, it, with that same crowd? Uh, I think it could be possible particularly if you have some other Christians, some other believers that are anchoring you in there and grounding you to remind you that's not who you are anymore. Right. Um, I do question if, you, if there's no other believers. I mean, if you're in there all by yourself and you got 10 years of history of being assimilated, I it may be time to just say, God, plant me in a different vineyard and send somebody else here. I blew it on this one or I, I, I've come into a deeper awareness of you now and but bottom line is I, I think I don't have realistically a great shot at making an impact more than they're going to probably pull me back in. Right. It's a great question. And it so is. we'll pray for wisdom for you. Yeah, it's one of the things that there's so many different situations that sure. uh, the, the important thing is that you shouldn't be asking this question alone, right? You should be really? praying about this question yeah. and asking other uh, Christian God brothers and sisters. Others. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, thank you, Ken, so sure. much uh, for being here with us today. And thank you all for tuning in. We'll see you all next week. Thanks for joining us for Postscript. Help us keep the podcast interactive by submitting your questions during the morning services. Learn more at faithbridge.org postscript.